let me say first of all that I'm I'm very happy to be a new in the academy. I can see uh, between the faces um, three of the first members of the academy, Monsignor Minerat, Rocco Butiglione, and I. The other come afterwards. And we are in the academy from 1994, uh, named by uh, Paul Poltigua. Um, well, I uh, have a, have a right my intervention, and uh, I list. I read that. The encyclical Fratelli Tutti is a kind of spiritual heritage of Pope Francis. It was written by Rafael Navarro Waltz of the Spain Academy of Social Sciences. Since according to the Pope himself, it refers to, I quote, issues related to fraternity and social friendship that, are, that have always been a concern of mine. In recent years, I have spoken of them repeatedly and in different settings. In this encyclical, I have sought to bring together many of those statements and to situate them in a broader context uh, reflection. Which is the broader context of reflection? Not only should certainly uh, be mentioned the eruption of COVID-19 pandemic that has left behind, behind many deaths and several people lock up in the hospitals and in their homes affecting the employment, the commerce, the education, and many other social important activities. But to this new context belongs also his frequent interreligious encounters with Orthodox Christian, Jews, and Muslims. Uh, these days uh, now in Iraq. His address to many governments and the United Nations, his pastoral visit to different churches, and his daily sermons in Santa Marta, which are nowadays an important milestone to understand the pontifical teachings. But above all, in a special way, his devotion should be considered to, uh, to the figure of Saint of Assisi that inspired his famous encyclical Laudato Si and whom the Pope venerates not only as brother in the face, but as a father. The encyclical stands out, I quote, Francis did not wage a war aim at imposing his doctrines. He simply spread the love of God. In this way, he became a father to all and inspired the vision of a fraternal society. Indeed, only the man who approached others not to throw them into his own life, but to help them become ever more fully themselves can truly be called a father. That's number four. It seems very important to me to highlight this paternal allusion of the encyclical because it reflects the vital attitude with which the pontifical teachings have considered social reality 
in many times, often with good or bad will, the social teachings of the church have been criticized for abandoning his religious approach to concentrate exclusively on the profane. Rocco has said to us that uh, the Pope is considered as a Marxist. But as also done by his predecessors, the Pope teaches that it cannot be talked about creation without considering, considering God's action and without taking into account his deep mark left behind on his work. With much greater reason it must be set for human being made in the image and likeness of God and called to a loving and fruitful dialogue with his creator. But furthermore, as the Pope points out in the above mentioned quote, the general character of God does not manifest itself once and for all, but according to the vital dynamism of his own creature. It manifests itself step by step according to the maturity of its conscience and of its free response to this dialogue invitation. The filial condition of human being develops itself in each circumstance. Human dynamic is therefore not separable from the paternal dynamics of God himself. This approach allows us to a better understanding of anthropology, but also of the evolutionary character of society, or as sociologists prefer to speak, the processual dimension of social facts. Just as God manifests himself paternally and creatively, in human life in a progressive way, so also does society structure the human phenomenon with a temporal dynamics in constant movement and adaptation to changing historical circumstances. When someone speaks of globalization, for example, it is not referring to a phenomenon structure in a fixed and invariant way, but rather to a process to mature and show itself, but also open to the future. Therefore, the man, the main conceptual error on understanding social reality is to be carried away by the shadow of a closed world, Svishin quote. As the Pope titles the first chapter of his encyclical, it manifests an ideological, normative, pedagogical, communicational, and existential confinement than, that is a temporary confinement that hides the living mystery of God, reducing him to one of the many idols in the forum. What are, according to the Pope, the many shadows of this confinement? Under the genetic mantle of globalization, he identifies two dynamism, both antagonistic and convergent, the dynamics of the market and the dynamics of populism. Pedro, oh, three minutes. You have another three minutes. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Although from different spheres, both have managed to converge in a single gray dynamic that moves the contemporary world on the one hand, the dynamics of the market has become autonomous through, through the stability of functional mechanisms, which increasingly regulate social expectation, regardless the particular and collective rights recognized to economic actors. On the other hand, the dynamics created by the demands of the population to public and private benefits regarding their living standard, the social security and of unemployment of the retired and the elderly, the extension of education, the secure housing and many other demands have become more acute all of which generate populist tendencies, very violent at times, which far from protected personal rights, use them to conjunctural purposes, far from people well-being. Both dynamism tend to contradict even though at times, they also converge and mutually support each other in the use of violence, as it has occurred in the realm of migratory populations. The pressure over the urban real estate prices and the control of pandemic virus last year. Anyway, according to the Pope, the contradiction between, between both the dynamics represents one of the greatest social tensions in the present, far beyond the ideological and geostrategic debate of the world powers. Thank you. Although, excuse me. Yeah, well, yes, another, another two minutes, one minute. Thank you. Well, Thank you, Pedro. Uh, Universal Brotherhood is undoubtedly a proposal for peace and justice, as has been the constant inspiration of the magisterium of the old popes after the Vatican II, and certainly of the present pope. In my modest appreciation, this renewed vision also represents a great advance in the formulation of the social doctrine of the church, insofar as the traditional ideological discussion of reference between liberalism and Marxism is subsumed in a broader reflection on the objective social mechanism does condition the development of human existence in the context of a more globalized and interdependent world. Thanks. This requires a deeper understanding of God's plans uh, at this moment of history. Requires above all a vision and experience of God in whom fraternity is found in his fatherhood. That is also the reason to conclude this encyclical with a deep prayer to God as, as common father of mankind. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much.